Does your life proclaim the greatness of the Lord? Good morning, everyone. This is a reflection question for today. In her book, My Life is a Miracle, Sister Bernadette Moria recounts an astonishing story of healing from Lourdes in France. Diagnosed with chronic back pain in 1966 when she was just 27 years old, Sister Bernadette has long felt the impact of illness on her life. She suffered from acute sciatic nerve pain and other medical impairments which forced her to stop practicing nursing in 1975. After 40 years of battling her illness, her doctor encouraged her to join the diocesan pilgrimage to Lourdes. The visit was not Sister Bernadette's first trip to Lourdes, but it was her first trip as a sick pilgrim. The travel was agonizing, she recounts. Fortunately, the morphine eases the pain. I allowed myself to increase the dose a little to help on this journey. Lourdes for Sister Bernadette was a place of peace. I'm always struck by the peace of this place. It's silence, she writes. There in the grotto is the still power of God, an unmoving, spiritual, mystical presence, so accessible to all, so close to the little ones, to the poor, to the afflicted. For this pilgrimage, she had resigned herself to her suffering. She went to Lourdes looking not for healing, but to pray, asking God for a conversion of heart and for strength to carry on. Describing the famous processions of the sick at Lourdes, Sister Bernadette says, This strange, almost baroque convoy with crutches poking out every which way, with its wonderful volunteers pushing or pulling, and always with a smile, what is it? It is the train of hope. Hope is perhaps the greatest gift pilgrims receive at Lourdes, knowing the healing and mercy of God, particularly through the sacrament of penance. While at Lourdes, Sister Bernadette had what might only be described as a mystical experience during the evening Eucharistic procession. She writes, At the moment the bishop blessed me, Christ asked me deep in my heart to offer him everything, everything, to hold nothing back for myself, to expect nothing, no comfort, no healing, to give myself totally to him, to give, not to take. Never before had she had such an experience of God. She was content to return home, having received the special grace of his presence and peace. By July 11, 2008, Sister Bernadette had returned home to her convent. While at prayer that evening, something strange happened. I felt a great relaxing of my body, like a warmth from my heart, suffusing everything, she reports. That warmth filled me. I didn't know what was happening to me. I went on praying. Then she went back to her room, she writes. And there I heard an inner voice telling me, Take off your braces. I immediately thought of the words of Christ in the Gospel. Rise, take up your mat, and walk. Without the slightest hesitation, without a moment's thought about what was happening to me, I took off all my paraphernalia, my leg splint, my corset, all of it. I felt perfectly well. In an instant, she had been healed. Sister Bernadette's instantaneous healing was declared officially miraculous by the Catholic Church on February 11, 2018. Some 7,400 cases have been registered with the official medical bureau at Lourdes over 135 years. Only 70 of those cases have been recognized by the Church as authentic, miraculous healings. In today's Gospel reading, Mary glorifies our Lord for having chosen her to bear the promised Messiah. Her joy is translated to her hymn of praise, her canticle, her magnificat, magnifying the greatness of God his goodness, and his love. We admire her devotion and stamina in traveling 70 miles or so to help and serve her cousin Elizabeth in the latter's pregnancy. It is also a reminder for us of what we can do to serve others. When she consented to be a handmaid, a servant of the Lord, she humbled herself thoroughly, expecting as any servant would to experience discomfort, pain, and sorrow along the way. For the son she will bear will cause a sword to pierce her very soul from look. For service is not about feeling good every time we serve the Lord. When we meet suffering and sorrow along the way, when we experience rejection and reprisal, scolding and slander, sacrifice that suffocates and stings, we persevere and offer all these humbling experiences for the reparation of souls and the purification of ours and our loved ones, because we owe more to the Lord than He owes us. Thus, the Magnificat teaches us the connection between humility and holiness. 
It is about continuously praising God in the midst of our circumstances. He doesn't want us to be heartbroken and burdened. He wants happiness for us, but He wants this happiness to be anchored on His conditions, His will. For oftentimes we latch on to our own will, the world's, the devil's, where happiness is fleeting and self-serving. And when our own will is not consummated, we give up, we lose hope, we fall into sin. When our words and prayers express our gratitude instead of complaints and platitudes, God is able to dispose of miracles in our favor, for our hearts are full of love for Him. Where love for God is full, their faith resides. Conversely, He scatters the proud in their conceit. He casts down the mighty from their thrones. How much more will graces flow into our life when our hearts are full of Him than when we empty ourselves of Him? We sanctify today everything that we do. We choose to be holy by reconfiguring the word sin, whose middle name is I. We turn the focus not on ourselves but on the Son, where the O is an offering, an expression of astonishment and affirmation that miracles happen because of the baby in the womb of Mary, who teaches us to magnify God's greatness in our lives. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, I seek you in humility, so that holiness will be mine. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.